everyone the three questions with kevin stewart all right man. i'm so pumped about this all right okay one of the things i absolutely love about this podcast is i just get to meet people i don't really know and then i sit and talk with them for about a half hour and kevin is like very fascinating uh, Kevin is actually the director of Innovative School Summits for AccuTrain, and I'm so excited because I will be joining you all in November um, yeah. in Chicago, and I am so pumped about this. Not only because it's with you, but I'm a like Chicago Bears fan. I don't know if you're a football person, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's a little embarrassing because I started watching them in 1985 when they won the Super Bowl, and they've sucked ever since, so... <laughs> just kind of been loyal to my team but uh kevin kevin is absolutely has a, an amazing story we're going to talk a little bit about uh the summit but just can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself what you do today i think it's a, a really great place to start sure um so i am the director of the innovative school summits uh we host uh our summits in five to six different locations throughout the country uh new york orlando nashville las vegas uh, San Antonio, Chicago this year. Um, and we are uh, all about bringing in their, their for anything K through 12, uh, whether you're a teacher, counselor, social worker, administrator, um, any of the above, all staff. We have nurses that come uh, open to coming and, and being a part of that. And I get the opportunity to be able to uh, help direct and lead, lead what we're doing with that. So. Well, it's funny because I remember, like, I think it was 2018, 2019, someone reached out to me and, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And then I don't know what's going on, but your social media presence for your summits is like really, really huge. Like there's a lot of people follow and I like watch, I'm like, oh, I want to be there so bad. I want to be there. <laughs> and then you contacted me. I was just giddy. I was so excited about it because you just, you've had really amazing people there. Um, I feel so honored that I was asked to to join you all because I know it's such a great experience. And the people that I know who have went to it have uh, talked really highly about how great of an experience it is. So I'm not gonna lie, I was like, you know, it was just some like loud cheering in my house when I saw your email. I was just well, like, no, oh. I, I listen, I and I say this with sincerity that I I'm super glad you're gonna be there. Um, I actually stalked you before I called you, <laughs> and uh, just to. Um, just to check you out and you got some incredible stuff. And uh, so I hope that anybody who sees this will, will join us. And anytime we have you in the future that they'll, they'll come because you've got some incredible stuff to say and uh, brilliant, some brilliant right. stuff. So. And, and I really appreciate that. You know, typically my stalkers don't out themselves. So I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm out. In. <laughs> I'm out. Cause I don't get to do it often. I don't, I don't really stalk people. So ever, if I do, I need to tell you that I'm doing it. So. I appreciate it, man. Well, hey, before we get into questions, we were talking before, and you have like a really, um, really interesting, I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, what did you do before this? And you did some work in El Salvador. And I was, I was like, I could just do a whole podcast on this. Like, this is fascinating. So like, can you tell everyone like you, well, I think you started working with AccuTrain, you said in 2012, is that correct? Well, yeah. 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 But before you were in El Salvador, what were you doing there? And like, it is like a very fascinating story. So in uh, 2005, my, my wife and myself and my oldest son at that time, my only son at that time, she was pregnant with our, our second son, uh, left and went for, to El Salvador, actually spent one year in Costa Rica in language school because I knew nothing about, I knew no Spanish at all. Yeah. Um, I could literally say God in bathroom and that was it. Um, <laughs> and in fact, this is just a side note. Um, that not to say how stupid I was, but just to say that, hey, all really anything's possible. Right. That I'm the only person that I know of. In fact, I asked the director of the school where we went in Costa Rica, uh, because when I got done with, he does like an exam when you first get there to kind of see what level where they need to put you and everything. And so uh, he got done with my my pretest, and thankfully it was all in you know speaking. Yeah. And I, he found out I knew nothing. And so he says, hey, why don't you just go outside and sit on the bench and, and your wife will be be with you in just a little bit. I said, well, what do you mean? Where is she at? And he's like, well, she's taking a written exam. And I, I said, well, don't I need to do that? He said, no, you're all right. You don't you don't need to do that. <laughs> and I found that I was the only person in the history of the school never to have to take the written exam because he knew I, I, I wouldn't have gotten anything correct. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> 
Um, so anyhow, that's uh, we left and went to El Salvador and uh, had the opportunity um, in the time I was there to be able to work with gang members. Um, did a lot, a lot of stuff with churches and and other people. But the one of the unique things for me that I never I was telling you before we started that. I I never dreamt it possible because I have I had nothing in common with a gang member mm -hmm. uh, like. I told you, I fifth grade, fifth grade PJ was right. the only fight I was ever in, right. and and that's because he got on my nerves and I slammed him up against the chalkboard and that was it. That was, that it. was the extent of my my naughtiness, and uh, and so I got the opportunity to be able to to work with gang members and help them, uh, especially those that wanted to come out of the gangs and help them find a place. Uh, we had some schools there. Uh, where they could learn baking, where they could learn uh, bakery skills and automotive stuff that they could uh, start learning to trade. So when they came out, they would actually have be able to to work and and get a job. Um, I remember I was working at a car wash with a group of about fifteen of them, and so after one of our meetings, uh, I was wanting to get my youngest son a a pinata for his first first birthday. And I said, hey, where do I get it? And they were all like, I can tell you where to get it, but you can't go there because if you roll up in your truck, somebody's going to steal your truck. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, but be here at five o'clock and we'll go with you. So five o'clock, I roll up and about six gang members jump in my truck with me. And we go downtown to where the pinata, where I could get the pinata. And, and when we get out, four of them jump out, guard my truck. And the other one goes in there with me and we get the pinata and come back out and i would just you know i was thinking that i you know truly the only thing that i can say that i knew how to do and i think that's what what gave me an incredible open door is that all people i know all people need love yeah and if i can give somebody the opportunity to be loved and and respect them uh as human beings um i may not have anything else in common with you but Hey, we all want love. So that's man, that's amazing. When you told me that, I was like, man, I just I gotta I gotta be better. Like I was just when you said that, I was like, wow, like I feel that's pretty amazing that you know dedicated your life to helping other people. And you know, like there's a lot of tough situations that people are in, and you know, you're you're right. They just kind of feeling that care from someone else can really make a, a positive difference. So I just wanted I, I wanted to ask you about it on uh record recorded uh podcast because i just yeah. I thought it was so so compelling so i know it's not the focus of the summits or anything like that but i i guarantee you that that work has impacted a lot of the work you do in education and so um i don't even know how to transition because that's like like that could be the end of the podcast right there so i just i really appreciate you sharing that um i do have three questions i want to ask you and uh, you know kind of helping to kind of share some of the um vision and the goals for each of these summits so like the, I, and I'm very sincere about this, the summits I've seen, just the stuff that's coming out of there, um, some of the conversations that are being had are, are really, really powerful. So like when you put these on, like what's the goal of, of actually, you know, of these summits, like to, to put this on? Cause I know it's not, I know that you hear the term like innovative uh, school summits and, and like people think it's really focused on innovation specifically. And I think in some context, the way I define it, it's always looking at new and better practices. I think innovation often sometimes is connected synonymously with technology, but I think it's yep. really about doing better things, no matter what area of education, what area of the world that you're in. So like kind of what's, what was the kind of the, the belief system and putting these summits together? What do you like hope to, to achieve? You know, I, I think for, for me personally, our team, uh, when we put these together, when we do a summit, uh, our, we truly want, number one, we want every every attendee that comes through, we want the speakers that come through, uh, anybody that's associated with it, that they that they walk through and they feel valued. Mm -hmm. uh, I put a strong emphasis on that with our team. We we want every, every person to feel like they're the most valued person there. Uh, and we try to do our best. I know we mess up and screw up sometimes, and and uh, but we we want that because uh, man, I, I realize you realize educators, it's a tough field. Mm -hmm. um, we got people quitting left and right and uh, not wanting to go back into it, uh, least paid um, profession in the world. Um, 
you know, all, all those things that we all know. I don't have to rehash that. And so, so when they come through, I want every person to feel valued. I want them to feel like, you know what, I, I can get away and, and find a place of relief. But we also want them to learn something. We want them to be able to walk away saying, you know what, that's incredible. I've got to sift through the, all the stuff that I've learned. But here's some thing, practical things that I can actually begin to put into place. Here's some things that I can take away. And there's some things that I may do off in the future. But here are, you know, three or four things that I can begin to implement immediately that I'm not doing that I know is going to help me. Um, so those those are those are I would say two of our biggest um, things that that we believe for our summits that we want people to feel we want you know them to learn feel valued we want them uh, yeah we, there's the innovative part of that but as you said it not necessarily doesn't have to do with uh, you know the the technological side of things and technology and all that it can just be simple innovation that they've never thought about. Right. Um, that that somebody else is putting into place. So so years ago when I wrote Innovator's Mindset, I actually remember, I can remember the person, I'm not going to say who it is, but I remember the person distinctly challenging me because I talked about how essential relationships were for innovation, that it was like really, really connected. And the we kind of got in an argument about it. And I said that the reality of this is if people don't feel appreciated, if people don't feel that you're supporting them, taking care of them. Why would they take risks? Why would they try different things? Why would they put themselves in a space? They would just do everything to check the box and get out of there as soon as possible. So I think that for me, that totally aligns with what I believe because you want people to feel appreciated, you know, and you, I think even you and I were having a conversation and I know this is something for me, a lot of times the speakers come to these events, they like hide in a green room and you know, everyone has a different process of what they're doing. I like to be around people and like get to know them, build their stories into, you know, what I'm talking about. Cause I'm there to learn too. Like I know that's, yeah. you know, that that's something. And there is value in every person attending those events. If you find it right, if you're looking for it, but if it's right. just like, Oh, I'm the expert. And I, I just, I'm, I, I never have felt comfortable with anyone ever calling me an expert. Cause you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. Right. So, um, yeah, so I, I so appreciate that because I think that is a lot of times we focus on innovation as being cutting edge, but it's like, like, I just, am trying to get through the day and I feel yeah. like I, like everything sucks. And it's like, yeah, like you have to, those are like bare minimum. People need to feel valued in the work that I do. So that, that really means, um, everything to me. So what, what is, the, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm glad you said that, uh, because when you come, we don't have a green room. <laughs> <laughs> right right uh and, and i say that, I mean, I say that jokingly, but it's true yeah. i mean our uh, all the speakers um hang out on the front row and meet the people 100 um, and uh are a part of it in fact one of one of our speakers who we've had several times one of the most incredible ladies i've ever met in my life um the lat in san antonio she was our closing speaker yeah. and literally got there two days before and attended yep. attended almost all the sessions so she could learn and be a part yep. and um so yeah i love that i love that so i i i'm so pumped uh to be there and i love that philosophy okay so now you create these this amazing experience people are really appreciated what have you seen as like happening you know in some of the schools some of the practice that you've seen as a result of being a part of this event so I would say probably the most impactful thing for me um, has been the past, oh goodness, past four or five summits. Literally after every summit, we have had at least one person, sometimes two people that have come up with tears in their eyes, a teacher, mm -hmm. an administrator with tears in their eyes saying thank you because literally we are walking away from this thing, quitting, getting ready to retire. Right. And because of not because of me or or the staff, but because of what they took in, because of words that were spoken over them by a speaker, uh, by a presenter, uh, something that they heard said, you know what, restored my faith in education and that I have something to give. I still have something to give and I'm not quitting. So thank you for allowing me to have that experience. And that for me, I can say that's been the greatest thing uh, without question. You know, that I, I, when you're saying this, the summer, you know, I'm, I'm working with schools and districts and, you know, it's like every day. And there was just one day I just like, 
oh, like, I just, I don't feel that I'm doing what I need to be doing. Like I, you know, I was, I always try to get really connected with the group and it just, something just felt off that day. And immediately someone came up to me after and she said, you know, I was going to retire and I listened to you mm. and I like, <laughs> and I started crying to this yeah. person after I was like, oh, like, cause I, and it's funny because I'm like, I'm the person who's supposed to be doing this for someone else right now. And she just totally did it for me by just going out of her way, sharing something. And you know, that is the hope you want people to, you know, have not only the hope, but the, the tools, the strategies to yeah. you know, think about things a, a little differently, create an experience that they want to go, you know, like I went into education cause I saw Billy Madison. I'm like, that looks fun. That looks fun. <laughs> I, mean, I wish I was kidding. Right. And I just like, just, you know, being around kids should be a, a joyous thing. And you know, there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of forces that are taking some of that joy away. All right. So this is the last question and this has kind of put me on the spot. I told you, you know, this is, this is, this is now some accountability because now this is recorded and like, if sure. I don't your answer, I can cut it off and pretend it never happened. So, uh, this is, uh, I, I'm going to be with you all in Chicago and like, I guess, you know, for, for me personally, and I guess for all of the people that you bring into this event, what do you hope for the people that come to speak at these events who, you know, are leading these professional learning sessions? Like, what is the hope uh, of what happens on those days? What do you hope, what do you hope that I do, I guess, on that day is, is the, the short version of that question. So uh, my hope for every presenter, um, you included, is that you are real, that it's, it's not a, you know, someone to walk away and say, yeah, that was, that was fake. I, people walk away and say, Hey, you know what? George was the most real person I, I, I've seen. Uh, and I, I tell everybody, Hey, if you can make them laugh, if you can make them cry, if you can make them walk away with something that they feel, you know, I, I've taken away something incredible from this, some substance, mm -hmm. uh, you've done your job. Um, and, and I think it, it not only, connects with your emotions we've got to connect with people's emotions but you've also got to give substance if we're not giving substance if we just have people who connect with people's emotions but have no substance then we haven't done any of our teachers or administrators or anybody that comes any any good but if we can connect with their emotions and give them substance then it's a win listen you know i you said like my philosophy and it's interesting in a sense that you're in north carolina and that philosophy, I don't know, I'm hoping, I'm praying you know who I'm talking about. Jim Valvano, yeah. state coach. His thing is laugh, cry, think. And he, he is my, he passed away so young. Mm. He is my idol as a speaker. Like he, I have watched his videos. Like I don't watch his videos to just, oh, yeah. I, I like, I like, I want to be him. This is, this is my goal to be him. And he talks about that focus on laugh, cry, and think. And I talk about it all the time, how that really inspired me. There was actually, uh, I was in North Carolina and I was actually talking about it and, and how blessed to be there and how this is like someone that, and his daughter came up to me and she was, wow. in the I had no wow. clue. And I was like, oh, like, I am like in the presence of royalty. This is a, absolutely amazing. So like, I'll never forget that. So that's always my hope. So I, now I'm like, <laughs> So man, I, like it was, I, I just so connect, I so appreciate connect with you. I, I feel man. like, I feel like sometimes, um, that the best part, like we did, I, I love what you shared, but I just love connecting you with before we were even recorded. And I'm like, I yeah. don't know if recorded that, but you know, I, I don't know. So I, I just, I can't wait to join you all in, I'm in Chicago. Kevin, thanks for taking the time out of your day. Cause I know like you're super busy doing you know, million things trying to help, you know, people around the world. So I feel blessed to have you there. I, I can't wait to, to meet you in person. Oh, same. Thank you for taking the invitation and thanks yeah. for asking me to be on here with you. And uh, man, keep it up. Truly, right, you're man. doing an amazing job and and I'm excited about having you. I'm looking forward to the people being able, those who haven't heard you, I know there's a bunch who've heard you before and and will come and, and have heard you. But for yeah. those who haven't, I'm excited for them to hear you. Thanks, brother. And if, if you want to actually learn more about the conference, you can actually see it. Kevin didn't ask me. I actually wanted to, to share this because I'm really excited to join you all. I know you do great work. So if you want to check it out, the link to the event uh, is in the description down below. Kevin, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.